Hey guys, it's David here. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is the inner critic. In terms of even knowing how to deal with it or what do you do with this thing, and it can seem like an enemy within us sometimes. First of all, understanding really what it is is a big, big step in that because there's a lot of confusion in that. So we're going to deconstruct the inner critic and leave you in no doubt about what it is, what it's trying to do. And uh, is it a bad guy? Maybe it's not a bad guy, we'll see. That's what we're gonna talk about. So this issue of the inner critic, I'm gonna read a question and it might help us start our, our, our sort of examination of the inner critic and this question, it starts off, it says, I've been practicing shadow journaling. Now, shadow journaling is something I talk about. It's just allowing that inner critic to come out and speak and you write it down. But I've been sh practicing shadow journaling for a few weeks, uh, like you talked about in the past video. And I've been mindful about how the inner critic talks to me throughout my day. The more I become aware of it, the more clear it is becoming just how negative and destructive it is on my life and yes it is destructive we'll talk about that it makes me feel worthless and afraid all the time why is this voice here i mean what function does it serve and is it ever possible to fully get rid of it so that's what we're going to talk about what is it why is it here why is it showing up and what purpose does it serve and uh what are we going to do with it can we can we get rid of it should we get rid of it so when we're talking about the inner critic we're talking about that voice it kind of chimes in it's a fearful voice it's a voice that fills us with a lot of doubt insecurity limitation and there's many different words for it many different ways people have classified it one of them is the superego that's freud's version for freud and for jung jung called it the negative animus and what that really is, it's kind of like a, a father-like or a masculine patriarchal inner voice, an authoritative voice that's chiming in and giving us feedback all the time. Often it seems like it's intrusive, uninvited voice that comes in. Another way to think of it is I like it's a subpersonality. It's a part of your psyche that chimes in every now and then. Another concept that's useful to think about this inner critic is that it's a system of thought. It's actually, it actually isn't really you, this part of yourself, right? It's a, it's a system, it's a whole framework of thought. Think of it this way. Your nervous system is your body. It's always looking for danger, that's its job. Your nervous system is designed to keep you safe all the time. If your nervous system could speak Okay, this is what it sounds like. It's the voice of be careful, be careful, be careful all the time. It's always looking out for danger. And this inner critic is actually a really central part of all of that. One thing I'm going to talk about here is something called universal thoughts. So what does it sound like? What does the inner critic sound like? Here's a few examples of what it sounds like. I need to know what to do. That's the inner critic. I'm just going to give you a few examples here randomly. Um, I need more money. Life isn't fair. I need to make a decision. I can't do anything right. I can't disappoint people. There's too much to do. I'm worthless. It's my fault. Uh, I missed my chance. This should be different. It's my fault. I'm a failure. I need to understand more. I did it wrong. I need to do it right. I need to be in control. Money will make me happier. I'll be better when I have more money. So sometimes it's in the form of an I voice, like it's an internalized voice as if it's your voice. Other times people say that they'll hear you. You need to improve. You can't let that happen again. So really it's what we're beginning to realize is this is really an internalized voice, from, usually from much younger in life that now is there chiming in all the time. And the thing about it is, it's not always bad, okay? Now, I get that it's very destructive, and it is destructive, it, it's, it's crippling to a lot of us. 
it's not always bad. There's usually a grain of truth in it, but the problem is that it's completely out of balance. This inner voice, this inner critic comes in almost um, like it's completely aggravated and it's shouting at you for attention sometimes when it's really, really aggravated. So it'll tell you things like you're bad, you're wrong, you're, you're inadequate, you're worthless, you're guilty. And again, just to point out, if your nervous system could speak, your nervous system preoccupied with only one thing, your safety, if it could speak, this is what it sounds like. Now, we tend to think of it as a problem. We tend to think of it as an enemy within almost. Now, what I'm going to say here is that, believe it or not, there are no enemies within you. There are no enemies within you. This voice, although it is destructive and it's, it's out of balance, it's over the top, ultimately, what it's trying to do is keep you safe, which is it's quite bizarre, really, when you think about it like that. Like it, It's the last thing. It doesn't seem helpful in, in any way, but it's actually trying to be helpful. It's identifying danger all around. This is the problem with our modern day life. Our nervous system is there is no physical danger. The nervous system will always have to do its job. So it gets busy looking for problems. It becomes maybe even hyper vigilant in its environment looks for problems, identifies threats, and will point, chime in with this over-the-top uh, in, input for you. Now, that's all very broad and generic. Um, I'm going to talk here about, more specifically, about what it is. What is this inner critic? What does it look like? We talked about some of the universal thoughts that it draws on. None of the, the thoughts that come from the inner critic are, are original. Original th or Universal thoughts are all repetitive. You may notice that. Your inner critic keeps saying the same things over and over again. It's not creative and different individuals. We all have the same, I'm not good enough. I need to do more. I need to be in control. They're universal. Okay, so there's nothing original about these thoughts. It's not a creative thought system. But I'm going to describe seven aspects of the inner critic. And this is from Jay Early's work. And it's really, really interesting to, to, to realize that there's different aspects even within the inner critic. And maybe you'll recognize some of these. So there's, there's seven of them. I'll list them off first of all. We have the perfectionist. We have the inner controller, the taskmaster, the underminer, the destroyer, the guilt tripper, and the conformist. And all of these things in our life, it looks like they show up and they hold us back. They're hurting us. But believe it or not, they're all trying to help in their own kind of dysfunctional way. And when we learn that, that's actually a big piece in, in healing this because we begin to realize there's no enemy within. I don't have to get rid of this. I don't have to avoid it. I don't have to deny it's there or, or, or distract myself from it. All I need to do is to reconcile with it. We need peace. We need less inner conflict. But to start off with here, this is something I talk about in my channel a lot, which is the, the perfectionist, which is a massive part in pro uh, procrastination. This inner critic doesn't help with this at all. So what is this perfectionist that Jay Early talks about? Well, he says, this critic tries to get you to do things perfectly. It sets high standards for the things you, you produce and has difficulty saying something is complete and letting it go out to represent your best work. So it's that it's not good enough, it's not good enough, it's not good enough, it's not good enough. It needs to be better. You haven't done enough work on this yet. It needs more time. That's the voice. That's what it sounds like, this uh, inner perfectionist. Its expectations probably reflect those of people who have been important to you in the past. So again, think um, parents, think teachers. High standards, maybe we made mistakes in the past, they were not really uh, accepted or that we were undermined for them. And this perfectionist becomes a part of who we are. Now, this perfectionist is only trying to prevent you from being judged harshly. Okay, and experiencing the pain of that. So it, 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 it gets into this, oftentimes it's this procrastination thing where it's never finished, it's never finished. So that's the perfectionist. Maybe you're, you're acknowledging that maybe, I don't know, maybe you recognize that in yourself. The second thing we have here is the inner controller. And when I think of the inner controller, I think of the shamer. This is the thing that, the voice that shames you for certain things that you do in your life. So Jay Early says, this critic tries to control your impulses. So eating, drinking, sexual activity, etc. It is prioritized, or sorry, polarized with an indulger. 
or an addict, which is it fears can get out of control at any moment. It tends to be harsh and shaming in an effort to protect you from yourself. So again, it's excessive. It's not particularly helpful, but it, its motive is safety, keeping you safe, protecting you from yourself in this case. And it's, it's motivated to try to make you, you a good person who is accepted and functions well in society. Okay, so it's protective. That's what it's doing here. But it uses this excessive shaming tactic. So if you notice there's an, any, an internal dialogue of maybe you eat that food or you have an extra drink at the weekend or something. And there's this shaming thing coming in. That's what this is. When you start to reconcile with this, you'll realize, okay, this voice isn't my enemy. It's, it's, it's excessive, but I realize what it's trying to do. Next one, the taskmaster. Again, I talk about this in my procrastination course. I call this the chronic doer, the person who is always, always busy all the time. The taskmaster, this critic wants you to work hard and be successful. It fears that you may be mediocre or lazy and will be judged a failure if it does not push you to keep going. It, it's pushing often activates, here we go, a procrastinator or a rebel that fights against its harsh dictates. So I talk about that in the course also. Any of these have to voices that we have, which is a part of this, the taskmaster, you have to do this, you have to do that. Eventually, a part of us, an autonomous part of us will rebel against that. And that re results in a stalemate in which we, we don't do anything. We don't relax, but we don't work. We're just stuck in this constant state of indecision. And that's what procrastination is. The chronic doer again, well, although, it, although it seems very, very harsh, again, it has our safety in mind. Again, this is why the nervous system is speaking. This is what the nervous system sounds like if it could speak. Safety, safety, safety. It only cares about safety. Next, the number four, the underminer. This one, the underminer is very, very prevalent. Um, it's a way to cope with bullying, for instance. Maybe we've had trauma from bullies in the past. This critic tries to undermine your self-confidence and self-esteem so that you won't take risks. It makes direct attacks on your self-worth so that you will stay small and not take chances where you could be hurt or rejected. So again, it's saving you from rejection. It's taking this job on of undermining you yourself so that you'll be saved from doing it. At least they, you have control over that now. And those people over there that you don't fully trust, they won't be in charge of that. It is afraid of your being too big or too visible and not being able to tolerate judgment or failure. So maybe, you have this voice that's telling you, no, don't go out and socialize. It's too dangerous. Now, it doesn't say that overtly, maybe. But it's, it's trying to keep you small, invisible, not to be seen. Again, this is the, the hypervigilance that we get from abuse or bullying in the past. We become very, very sensitive to our surroundings. That's the underminer that we get from that. Next is the destroyer. Now, this comes from trauma, really. Um, if there's been really, really bad abuse in the past or really difficult life situation, this is how the nervous system deals with a really negative event situation. It makes pervasive attacks on your fundamental self-worth, fundamentally who you are to the core of your being. It shames you and make you, it makes you feel inherently flawed and not entitled to basic understanding or respect. Now, why on earth would our nervous system do this? You, must, you might be asking yourself, how could that possibly be helpful? This most debilitating critic comes from early life deprivation or trauma, and it is motivated to believe that it is safer not to exist. Okay, so the trauma is so painful. It doesn't want you to go through that trauma again. It convinces you that it's better off if you don't exist. Again, way out of balance, way too excessive in the feedback that this, that this is given. And we, we see this in depression. We see this obviously in suicidal ideation, but it just goes to show that there's, this isn't about a character flaw when this happens. This is people always trying to do their best, even in terrible, terrible situations. But the destroyer, it can also be in other things. The destroyer can also be there in relationships. It keeps just destroying things to keep them, keep you safe, to keep you away from them. Next, we have, there's only two left. We have the guilt tripper. And this is the one that I say, it uses the past as a weapon, the guilt tripper. This is when we get those cringe memories popping into our awareness, something's reminding us of them. The nervous system, the, the inner critic is showing us these past failures. 
This critic is stuck in the past. It is unable to forgive you for wrongs you have done or people you have hurt. It is concerned about relationships and holds you to standards and behavior prescribed by your community, culture, and family. It tries to protect you from repeating past mistakes by making sure you never forget or feel free. So again, it's basically saying, never let that happen again. Look, remember, 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 this happened. Look what you did, look what you did, look what you did. Again, just trying to stop you doing it in the future. Completely unhelpful, really, but it's coming from a place of safety, just safety preoccupied. And finally, we have the conformist. And I talk about this in terms of the tribal acceptance. When we're young, the most important thing is that we're accepted by people around us to feel safe. And if that isn't there, that's a big problem for us. So the conformist tries to get you to fit into a certain mold based on standards held by society, your culture or your family. It's all about fitting in for safety. It wants you to be liked and admired and to protect uh, to protect you from being abandoned, shamed, or rejected. This is a massive one. This is really the most fundamental one there is because the, the fear of being abandoned or to be left alone is really the most traumatic feeling that there is. The conformist fears that the rebel or the free spirit in you would act in ways that are unacceptable. So it keeps you from being in touch with and expressing your true nature. Okay, so anytime you think about taking risks, or to express something authentic about yourself, this conformist will come in and start making comparisons. Okay, look at this. This is not acceptable. This is the way other people do it. Unhelpful, makes you feel restricted inside. It's, it's, it's really difficult for um, creativity to come through with this part of us there. But again, it's all about safety. So I know I've been repetitive here and I'm, I'm gonna finish up this video here at this point because I just want you to sit with those Again, just one last reminder, we have the perfectionist, the inner controller, the taskmaster, the underminer, the destroyer, the guilt tripper, and the conformist. All of them working in their own little way to keep you safe with this excessive emphasis on safety, right? So I'm just gonna leave it there for now, but that's really answering the question, what is the inner critic? Why is it there, safety? And can we ever get rid of it? And that's what I'm going to focus on in, in, in more detail later. But getting rid of it, it does not involve ignoring it, pushing it away, pretending like it isn't there, distracting yourself. Um, what it does, how we, how we deal with this is we have to reconcile with this. We have to recognize that it's afraid and it needs to feel safe again. And we have to bring your authentic personality and this voice of the nervous system, the inner critic, into alignment, okay? And we have to convince the nervous system, it's okay, I hear you, I recognize you, but we're safe, I promise we're safe. Convince it that it's safe. That is not achieved through positive thinking or denial. That is a process, and that's what we're gonna get into more um, in, in a little while here. So, thanks so much for watching, food for thought, I hope that was helpful, and um, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.